Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. And uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us today, the second month of the year 2022. By the grace of God, we are in it and we bless the name of the Lord. Welcome to Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry Bible Study Thursday. We bless the name of the Lord. Welcome that we may dine together, that we may enjoy the word of the Lord, that we may be edified of the Lord, and that we may study the mind of God, because the Bible is the mind of God, is the breath of God. It is the bread of life. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory, honor, praise, and majesty. We give you all adoration. Thank you, my Father. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come and let your will come here, my Father, and perform that which you have intended in this place, through this place, and through your vessels here, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we pray for every individual that is watching and that will be joining us to watch, my Father God, them that are here, Jehovah God, uh, personally, we give you glory for them. We pray that, Lord, even as we minister Jehovah God and as we are ministered to by your word, that let your grace and presence cover us, your anointing, your power be upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. May you take total control in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that this word will bring deliverance, will bring healing and salvation in the name of Jesus and that this word, through this word, we will hear your voice, your voice that is speaking even as at now because you are the living God, the Lord who reigns, the Lord that was is and will be in the name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega. And from this word, my Father, we are sharpened, we are resurrected, we are renewed, we are rejuvenated, we are healed and sanctified by the water of this life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word reach all the corners of this world. Father God, as you have intended, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for everyone, my God, that Lord will be with them as we hear and listen this to this word in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that your signs and wonders shall follow us, my Father, as per your word and manifest your grace and presence oh, in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. As I surrender to you, I pray for your perfect will to be communicated through your word, through this vessel in the name of Jesus Christ. I subdue my mind, my Father, Father, under your feet, Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit, you may take total control in the name of Jesus Christ. I disappear that you may appear. I hide behind the cross that Jehovah you may be seen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, may be seen, my Father God. This voice, my Father, you are taking it to use it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Father, be praised, be glorified, and be honored even in this place in Jesus' mighty name name we pray. Amen and amen. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have been uh, studying the book of Haggai. In the last session, we studied Haggai chapter number one, and we finished off uh, uh, chapter number one of Haggai. And today we are starting off chapter number two of the book of Haggai, the prophet of God uh, in the Old Testament, uh, towards the end of the book of uh, the, 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 the end of the Old Testament. So I will read Haggai chapter number two, verse one to five. Haggai chapter number 2, verse 1 to 5. Uh, the Bible says, On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, Who of you is left? Who Oh, hallelujah. Who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you. 
declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. I'd like to repeat uh, uh, that portion. Verse 1 to 5 of Haggai chapter number 2. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left? Who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. Be strong, all of you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I have covenanted, this is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty revisits uh, his people, the remnants of Judah, uh, under the leadership, the, 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 the priestly leadership of Joshua and the kingly leadership uh, or under the governorship of uh, Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel. And we dwelt uh, for some time on, on who was Zerubbabel and who was Joshua, as, uh, the high priest. In chapter number one, as we were beginning uh, the, 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 the study of this book. And so I'll not dwell so much on that. But then, uh, here, God is revisiting his people. He had talked to them in chapter number one. Remember the way he told them that they should, uh, uh, they should uh, uh, stop excusing themselves and giving excuses that it wasn't time to construct, to reconstruct the temple. And he reminded them that uh, he was with them. He had told them to give a careful thought to their ways because they had left the house of the Lord in ruins. And he commanded them now to rise up and go up the mountain and collect timber and come and build the house of the Lord so that they may not just enjoy the ambience of their beautiful, expensive paneled houses, uh, kingly houses uh, that they had constructed, yet giving excuses about uh, building the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so he had talked to them, and we saw towards the end of chapter number one that for sure these people obeyed, uh, they accepted, and God reassured them that he was with them. He told them that he was with them even as they were rising. And the Bible says that he stirred their hearts. The way we studied uh, in, in the last, in the final verses of chapter number uh, two, uh, the, sorry, chapter number one. And if I may, I may just read there quickly, verse 13, uh, chapter number one, Haggai, verse, thir uh, verse 13. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave his message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shelchen, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius. So we have left, we have left it at at the, at that, we left it at that point that now these people obeyed and they did not, uh, they did not just uh, listen to the prophetic voice. They did not just listen to Haggai and kept quiet, but they did something about it. They made a decision. They resolved. For sure they gave a careful thought uh, uh, on their, uh, uh, of their uh, ways as, as God had instructed in verse number 7 uh, and also later on. Uh, but then they decided to do something about it. They decided to work. Work uh, was the issue that God had with them. They did not want to work. Yes, they were working 
uh, benefiting themselves, uh, planting for themselves, constructing for themselves, doing things for themselves, but they had neglected the temple of the Lord as we studied and we, we saw that it's not just about the physical temple, but also the spiritual temple, also this bodily temple, you being the, 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 the what? Being the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, Jehovah God uh, decided, he told them, to go and, and do that work, and they decided that we will do the work. And so after they had accepted, uh, accepted to do that work, now he comes again with another voice. He comes again to speak to them. He comes again. Uh, uh, he has not yet finished with them. That yes, they have begun the work, but he's not leaving them at that point. Because he knew, as we are going to see, there were some concerns that were there, and these concerns uh, could have threatened uh, the, the continuation of the work of the Lord uh, and maybe the work of the Lord of constructing, reconstructing, rebuilding the temple of the Lord could have stalled once again. So God did not want such a scenario. So because the people were willing, people had given a careful thought to their ways. They had agreed. They, they had decided. Uh, in other words, they had repented uh, 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 and came back uh, to, their, to, to the right track of looking to Please the Lord. And so now God uh, uh, visits them again through prophet Haggai. He speaks and now that's how chapter number 2 starts. And chapter number 2 puts it very clear that it was on the 21st day of the 7th month. Uh, on the 21st day of the 7th month. This seventh month, uh, before we continue, has got something. It's good to understand the background of this seventh month that, uh, that, that, that the prophet Agai is speaking. This seventh month, it is around October uh, 520 BC. October 520 uh, BC. Uh, uh, and remember, in, uh, uh, in chapter number one, when God is coming to speak for the work of the Lord to start, uh, in, in, in chapter number one, it was in around uh, August, the same, same, the same, year, the same year. So uh, the, the seventh month, uh, in, uh, that is the Hebrew calendar, and so uh, it was around uh, 520 BC in October. And when you go and study about that particular month, it was, uh, it was a season of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the feast time. It was feast time. It was the feast season. People were, were, were celebrating the feast season and uh, also the day of atonement and the feast of tabernacle. So it was a time when there was uh, the celebrations of uh, the tabernacles, the feast of the tabernacles. It was also known to be the month of gifts. Uh, the seventh month was also known to be the month of gifts. It was the month of the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a season that they were celebrating. Now, more interestingly about this particular month, that God is coming to encourage, to tell the people to continue uh, rebuilding the temple, that they, they, they should continue. And now the work had restarted. The work had started. It is the same, same during the same, same season. It was during the same, same season that the temple, the first temple was finished in, in 2 Kings chapter number 8 verse 2. That the, it was during that time that King Solomon was dedicating the same temple that was now later on uh, destroyed and now it is being reconstructed. God wants it to be reconstructed. It is during the same season. That will speak to you so many things. That it is not by coincidence. It's not coincidence. God had programmed uh, his plans for the temple in a very miraculous way. And so this happens during almost the same, uh, during the same season, the, the, the season in 2 Kings, uh, and as we'll read in 1 Kings chapter number 8, verse number 2. It is important to understand the context of these verses uh, because we are doing a Bible study. Other than just running with the scriptures, it's good we understand that context. Hallelujah. So in 2 Kings chapter number 8, verse number 2, the Bible says, All the Israelites came together to King Solomon at the time of the festival in the month of Ethanim. 
the seventh month. Now you see it is during the, 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 the same kind of season that now God comes years later, more than 66 year, years, uh, uh, that's so many years later. He comes now, he's speaking about this temple that was uh, dedicated in such a season. It is, a, uh, it is another similar season that this temple has to be uh, rebuilt once again. The work has to continue. I thought it important that we understand those seasons of the, of the Bible. Now, it is in, during this time that the word of the Lord comes through the prophet, or, uh, prophet Haggai. It is not any other prophet. Uh, God still uses Haggai to bring another message that God is building on what he had spoken in chapter number one. He is building on that uh, as we see in verse number, na, number one. Now, in verse number two, he says, Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, there are, ask, there are questions to be answered here. There are questions that God brings uh, uh, at play. There are questions of which, if you look at these questions, it means there are some things that had been going on in the midst of these people of Judah. Maybe they were asking themselves some questions based on what they were seeing compared to the temple, the majestic, magnificent temple that Solomon dedicated in 2 Kings. Uh, so, uh, the, because this was a magnificent temple, it was a, such a great temple, and the Bible says that the many major resources were pulled together, uh, uh, not only by King Solomon, but also remember, King David had pulled these resources together to, to make it easier for the son, King Solomon, to build this temple. And also when King Solomon came, there were many materials that were brought, and there were many things that were brought for mag the magnificence, for the, for the uh, uh, splendor of that, uh, of that temple. And now God knew that from a human point of view, there were some kind of dilemmas. There were some kind of questions. There could have been some kind of mamas in their hearts. And so that's why God comes. Uh, and he comes and because he knows the hearts of those people. He knows what those people are thinking. He knew he's a, a, he's a God that understands our thinking. He knows what we are thinking. Even right now, wherever you are, whatever you are thinking about this God or about this word, or about this scripture, about this nation, the questions you are asking yourself, God knows them. So God knew that this was the, the, this was the suspense in the hearts of the people and maybe they were talking among us themselves. So let's go to the questions that God was asking. And remember, we are saying that God maintained that program of speaking to the prophet uh, Haggai to speak to Zerubbabel, and, and, uh, and, and Joshua the high priest. This time, he did not change the channels. He used the same channels. He spoke to the remnant, to the people of Judah, through Haggai, under the leadership of, uh, of the governorship of Zerubbabel. And so he tells them now, ask them, God has got some questions to be answered. God ha has got some answers that he needs from the people. Though he had the answers, he has the answers, but he wants them to know that he knows their questions. Praise the Lord. This is a point, uh, 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 if I may uh, pause there a little bit. You know, God knows our questions. God knows our dilemmas. God knows what the, the, the suspense we have. That you could be looking at a thing. You could be looking at a particular ministry that God has given you, a particular mission that God has given you. You have got so many questions. Sometimes you'll not ask them uh, physically, but you just have them in your heart. You are wondering how things could work. God knows those questions. And before you ask those questions, uh, God will answer those questions by asking you sometimes other questions. And in this case, God asks some questions. Verse number three. Uh, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is bringing forth these questions through the prophet. That who among you was there? 
He was sure that there were people that had been there during the times uh, before, before the, 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 the temple was plundered, before the temple was put into ruins, that there were some people who had been there, who had seen the way the temple was glorious, the way the temple was magnificent, the way the temple was, was so nice and was something to be beheld. Remember, the queen of Sheba could come and people could come from all over to come and admire the work that the king Solomon had done, and especially on the temple. And things were so nice, they were so glorious, and the glory of God had come. So the temple was not only physically glorious, but it was glorified also with the glory of the Lord, because you remember, God descended in that, in that temple. And so God asks them a, a, a question. You know, it reminds me of, of, of the question that God asked Ezekiel. Sometimes God Okay, God at, at points, he wants to edify us with some kind of humor in his word. God is humorous at some point. <laughs> because God, uh, like the times of Ezekiel, he had the answer. And Ezekiel told him when God is asking Ezekiel that, uh, do you think these bones can come back to life? Does it mean that God did not have the answer? He had the answer. The same, same way to, uh, in this particular verse, God comes to ask them questions. Not that God does not have answers. God had the answers. He knew who was there. He knew what they had seen. He knew that temple was more glorious. And he knew that was what was ringing in their hearts and their minds that they were talking among themselves. The old people. And if you want to know this, uh, because he, uh, because uh, he, uh, if you want to see the situation how it was, you will see it in, uh, in, in Ezra chapter number 3. Ezra chapter number 3, uh, that's, that's where uh, people remembered of how the former temple was and they saw this one and some were weeping. I think we should read there. Uh, Ezra, Ezra chapter number 3. Let me, let me quickly read there, Ezra chapter number 3. Uh, the Bible says, verse 12 and 13, But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard uh, afar. That is Ezra chapter number 3, verse 12 and 13. And so we see that for sure God knew there were old men in the midst that had seen the way the temple had been in the, its former glory. And now a foundation had been raised. But they looked at this foundation and they were just, they felt disillusioned. They felt hopeless. And, and they started weeping. When, when people are shouting for joy because this is a great achievement, finally we are starting off uh, the work of the Lord. We are rebuilding the temple. Even after coming from, uh, from captivity, we are rebuilding the young generation. They were joyous. They were happy. They, 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 they were celebrating that we are on course. We are doing something. We are under the, the leadership uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the servants of God. Uh, we, they celebrated, but then there were also those who were weeping, them that who had a lot of pains. So God knew there were such kinds of mamas, such kind of, of, of dilemma. And so God comes to look for, uh, to, to answer them and to, to, to address this issue. Because remember, uh, Haggai was speaking uh, 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 around 
uh, 66 years after the temple had been destroyed. So there were people, and remember those times people were living many, many, uh, many years. So 66 years for sure when God was asking that uh, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? For sure there were people there. The Bible does not uh, tell us those people who answered that they were there, but for sure they were there. And he wanted to, for them to, uh, to ponder over how that temple was. Now, and as I said, that God is addressing this thing so that he's helping them answer those questions because they had asked themselves that, ah, now na hili jengo lilikuwa nzuri sana hili kanisa hili akalo lilikuwa la kupendeza hii kazi ambayo tumeanza kufanya si ni kazi ndogo tu haiwezi kalinganishwa that this work cannot be compared to the work that was done the the, the resources that were pulled together the, the the many people that were doing that the good will from the uh, the whole of Israel here we have just remained a few we are just the remnants praise the lord you see that that kind of scenario people are saying we are just the remnants because many people have, have perished in captivity. Others have remained in captivity. We are so divided. During those times, the glory of God was with us. The glory of God descended in that temple. And here, God has just spoken to us in chapter number one that, that he's not happy with us. He has even shut the heavens. He has even uh, uh, shut the grounds. There, there's no rain. There's no dew. And he has just spoken to us. We have just started the work. Yes, he has said that he's with us. But when we see, it is not like the times of King Solomon. It is not like the times, those, those times, uh, even the, the young ones who uh, had been told about, about the temple by, by their grandfathers and their, their parents. And so they knew. So there were some people, there were those who were shouting with joy because they were happy. But there were those, even the young, young ones, who were pessimistic, who were looking like, they were in a dilemma. They were in a suspense. They didn't know whether that work will continue or not. They were thinking it is even better just to stay back. Who knows, maybe it's one of the reasons that had made them to relax and leave the temple in ruins because they imagined hata tukianza hii kazi, hatu taweza, hatu tafikia mahali Suleman alikuwa mefikia, hatu na matu wengi. You see, there were so many good reasons for them to be discouraged not to do the work. But these are the reasons that God has come to address. Hallelujah. As we are speaking now, many of you, you have got so many reasons. You have got so many good reasons to make you not pursue that course, not pursue that work that God has assigned you, not to pursue that responsibility, that task that God assigned, has assigned you to do. You are looking at yourself and maybe it's something you tried to doing and it did not materialize, did not go through. You are asking yourself, what am I doing differently today? And maybe God has given you another opportunity so that you may rise up again. Maybe I'm speaking speaking to a minister somewhere, maybe I'm speaking to a servant of God somewhere, you tried and started a fellowship, you tried and started a church, you tried and started maybe an orphanage of which I'm talking about something that God had spoken to you, and God had spoken to you, but you reached at a point and you became discouraged, you wondered maybe the resources that you are depending on, maybe the resource persons that you thought could be supporting you, they are nowhere to be seen, you are in a dilemma, this is the same same dilemma that the people of Judah were in. They were looking at themselves and saying, yes, we have started the work. Yes, God has said that he's with us, but we are not in large numbers like the times of, of Solomon. We are just remnants. We are just the weak ones. Maybe the strong ones had been captured and, and, and remained in captivity so that they may work for the, for, for the captors. Hallelujah. These are the same questions that, that one could be asking themselves today. Uh, I can tell you for sure that God knows those questions. The way he highlighted those questions, the questions he highlights here, they are the same, same questions that people are asking themselves that for sure wasn't the first temple more glorious, wasn't the first temple more magnificent, wasn't their ma major resources uh, to, to finish the work. Are we able to do it? This is the direct dilemma that the people had uh, thinking of that majestic uh, temple uh, the, the people were in, in, in they were in a kind of a dilemma but then as God has asked those questions and for sure we have seen that yes it is true there are people that were there that, uh, during that time and the temple was more glorious the temple the, uh, 
uh, it could uh, seem like it couldn't be uh, compared, it could be nothing compared to that temple. But then, here what God has uh, in, in this particular one. In verse number, in verse number three, uh, the Bible says in verse number three, Sorry, number, number four. The Bible says, but now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Now God is bringing an answer. Mungu analeta jibu. As you are in that, in, that, uh, particular, uh, in that particular dilemma, God comes with an answer to the people, to the remnants. Uh, you, you see, in comparison, in comparing the temple that was there with the work, with the, temp uh, with the temple that is being reconstructed, there, is, there are two ways. With this one, they had compared to an extent that many had been disillusioned. Many had, uh, had, uh, had uh, become hopeless. Many were almost giving up because they thought there's no way to pursue this. This is not just possible. Umayona watu wamejaribu kufanya jambo anasama, ah, itu achane na itu. Hii haita wezakana, hii ni ngumu. Hii hata tumejaribu njia zote. Praise the Lord. There are people who could have thought so. But it is because of that attitude. And God does not like that attitude. The, uh, what, one thing that these people are not remembering is that it is God that had instructed them to do that work. But then since God had so seen that point of weakness, that's why he came to speak again. That's why he came in the seventh month to speak again. To tell them that he was with them. Though they were comparing and seeing that that temple could not, uh, 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 could not be that glorious, but then he had some information for them. Many times when we compare ourselves, we compare what we have succeeded to get in the past with, with what we have now, or we compare our past glory, our, the past glory of the work we have done with what we are doing now, Sometimes there are two ways. You will either be encouraged and use it as a benchmark to go higher or there is an option that you will be hopeless just as I've said. You'll be hopeless and see that there's no, no, uh, there's no need of doing that. Hallelujah. Sometimes, for example, uh, you can see this in a, simple, in, in a simple group task. You might be in, a, in groups and uh, different groups have been given uh, a responsibility. Unapata wakati mingine tumeenda katika vikundi pengine wakati wa retreat. Na kuna vikundi kama vitatu vinne. Na kila kikundi kimepewa kazi kwamba nyi mtafanya hili, nyi mtafanya hili, nyi mtafanya hili. Ama mtafanya the same thing. Mostly hili ambayo uwa ninaona wakati mingine muna changanyishio magazeti, muna changanyishio magazeti, kila, muna, kila mtu anambio, wa, kila kikuni muna ambio, haya, organize yo magazeti, organize haya magazeti. Unaona kuna wala mba watafanya, watafanya haraka sana, within a minute or two minutes, already hiyo kitu ikotari. Sasa kama vikundi ni vitatu ama vinne, kuna wala mba wataconcentrate, watafanya pole pole lakini wanaconcentrate. Na kuna kikundi kingine, what they will dwell so much on hearing ile kikundi yenye napiga kelele sana eh hey, tumemaliza tumemaliza lakini hii kikundi hao na concentrate kwa hizo sauti wata hao ndio watakuja mwisho because wanakuwa worried wale washamaliza wana disorganize wale washamaliza so that's the danger of comparing what we are doing with others We're, uh, 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 comparing with an attitude of competition Comparing with an attitude, and not just competition, but negative competition, unhealthy competition, it stagnates us. It makes us not to continue on the purpose that God has given us. Or at times it will make us to be copycats. Tunataka tufanya kile ambacho uyo mingina anafanya, because it seems to be working more. You leave your area of specialization. You leave the area that God has called you. You leave, for example... God could have called you as an evangelist. But then you look at your friend, maybe a classmate, your schoolmate, who is a pastor. He's a pastor in a church. And you see, Unaona Kama, he's more comfortable, she's more comfortable. And so you want to lose focus. You say, ah, ata yule nilikuwa ni namushinda darasani. Na mefaulu kuendesha ilo kanisa na mnaivu. 
si si hata mimi nianzisha niacha kuzunguka zunguka na uinjilist na kwenda kwa mahospitali bwana yesu asifiwe there is that temptation there is that temptation to compare ourselves to what others are doing and instead of using it positively we it, it discourages us it stops us from looking at where god has forgetting that it is god that has called us this is the danger that these people were going into that that's the wrong mentality the mentality of that that brings uh, the discouragement instead of being as a benchmarking uh, point it becomes a point of hopelessness it becomes a point of discouragement and negative competition negative attitude and sometimes it brings uh, some kind of resentment it brings some kind of rebellion in our midst why because we think ours cannot work this is the danger that the people of Judah were facing they saw that the temple they were constructing though it was God that had commissioned them to to reconstruct but it uh, th there was a danger that it could not be like the other one and so there was uh, the threat of being a uh, uh, people, people uh, being discouraged to continue working just the way today people might uh, uh, just decide that we will not work if I may use the uh, 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 political example today, you will find that, for example, in your area, you will find that it is so and so uh, who will be vying, and so and so, maybe two, three people that you know they are not, uh, 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 they have not been working or something of that sort. So instead, you utapata wengine na sema atasi taenda kuchukua kura. Kwa sababu mimi hakuna haja nipige kura. So it's the same same uh, the, the, the same scenario. You find that some people will, they will choose not to continue working. Why? Because they think it will not end anywhere. I'm emphasizing this so that we may see as to why God came and asked these questions and he had an issue with them. And this kind of mentality is like the one that the 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 the, that was in Numbers chapter number 13. The case about the 12 spies. They went, the 12 spies, they went together with Joshua and Caleb. After doing a survey, yes, they saw the land was uh, full of milk and honey. They, they, they got to a point where there were a lot of grapefruits and they picked some. But then when they came back, there are those who capitalized on reporting about the negative things they saw, the fears they saw. And in reality, in reality, the fears were there. But then Joshua and Caleb, because they knew, they understood that the one who had sent them, the one who had covenanted with, uh, with, with Abraham, the one who had agreed with Moses that for sure these people will go to the promised land, he was there and he was in charge. And so they decided to see things from the perspective of the author of the journey rather than from the perspective of a human eye. Praise the Lord. That's now what makes difference. That's when the, where the Bible says the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And not, it's not to mean that uh, you will be blind on realities. You will see them, but you will see them from an angle of faith that though this one is here, though this work is so much, though this rebuilding has, will cost a lot, but then I choose to look it from God's point of view because it's God who has spoken and God will deliver. It, he is the author and the finisher. And he says that he has called us. And because he has called us, he will see that which has started in us uh, uh, come to accomplishment. So that's the difference between walking by faith and walking by sight. And so, in other words, God was calling the people of Judah, the remnants, under the leadership of Zerubbabel and Joshua, that it was time they should look things, uh, or they should walk not by sight, but by faith. There are those that had seen sight, and they were seeing sight, but that there was that which God was seeing, and he was speaking faith. 
Praise the Lord. Because that the kind of mentality in Numbers chapter number 13 of the 10 spies among the 12, it actually brought chaos in the, in the camp. People began weeping. People began crying and wondering why God was allowing them. God through Moses. And actually at that point they were just seeing Moses. That it was the fault of Moses. Wondering why Moses was taking them to a land where there were giants of people. Though there was honey, but they would seem like grasshoppers before them. The grasshopper mentality, hallelujah. The grasshopper mentality will stagnate you. The grasshopper mentality will make you go back to captivity. The grasshopper mentality will make you not to walk anywhere. It is important to have the mentality like the lepers in the Old Testament. That yes, they were lepers. Nobody could entertain them. They were outcasts. They could not be of any solution according to the human beings at that time. And according, according to the Jewish traditions. The lepers could not be of help. Especially where battle is concerned. But the Bible says that the lepers encouraged themselves and said, we shall go. They did not know that they were the vessels that God wanted to use. No wonder the Bible says that God will use the weak to ashamed the strong. Praise the Lord. Yes, God had intended to use the, those lepers. When they said that we will go. No. Very healthy people. Chosen people. Strong people. Having gone on a journey. They had a grasshopper mentality. But then four lepers. Who were inspired by God. Lepers of whom they, could be, they were outcasts. Therefore. If, even if they say that God has spoken to us, you are unclean. How can God speak through an unclean thing? <laughs> but God changed the way he does things. He used the lepers to bring victory to Israel. Praise the Lord. And so when we compare ourselves how are we comparing ourselves? Are we comparing ourselves so that we may, uh, are we comparing ourselves or comparing the things we are doing with others so that we may have, uh, 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 we, if they are higher than they are us, we may use it as a benchmark or we are comparing ourselves so that we may be discouraged or sometimes we are comparing ourselves so that we may look for ways to live our own, our own task and go and bring the others down. Because there is also that negative influence. Because such comparison, as I've said, it brings hopelessness. Oh, we can no longer go. We cannot make it. It's better we live. A fatherly to watch. Let us not waste the, the, the small resources, the few resources that we have. This is what God was fighting. This is the kind of mentality. God had brought them from captivity, but he was also removing captivity from their heads, from their minds, from their hearts. God has taken you from the captivity of sin, from the captivity of mediocrity. It is high time you allow God to remove that captivity from your heart, from your mind. Just as Paul says in Romans chapter number 12 that we have to renew our minds. That we should not conform to the standards of the world. But be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And so, uh, when, you get your, when you get yourself getting into the temptation of comparing yourself to others. Or comparing what you used to do to what you are doing for the Lord. Watch out so that it may not make you fall. It is supposed to push you forward. It is not supposed to make you. Remember these people as we have seen in Ezra. They were weeping. They were in pain. Hasa wangeli pona siku gani. Nani mungu mwenye wa menena. Amesema ya kwamba niko nanyi. Rudini mukaenda kujenga hekalu. Mungu alikuwa mejua ni kweli kwamba hekalu la kwanza lilikuwa la utukufu zaidi. 
Lakini ni yeye ambaye alimpa Sulemani hekima. Yeye ndiye alimpa uwezo na amali ya kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba hekalu linaendelea akampa watu. Yuyo huyo Mungu ndio alikuwa amewanenea kwamba pandeni milima mkaenda mkalete mbao ili mjenge upya hekalu. Kwa hivyo hakukuwa na haja ya kuomboleza kuhusiana na lile ni kweli kwamba wangelikumbuka waseme na kweli lilikuwa la utukufu lakini sasa tufanye kazi Bwana Yesu asifiwe and it should be remembered as I've mentioned that the reconstruction was commissioned by God himself right from the way we have seen in Ezra that God moved the hearts of the kings The way we have seen in Haggai that God touched and moved and stirred the hearts of people. God did not stir the hearts of people so that they can be there hopeless. God does not begin a thing and leave it at that. God is not afraid of the process. He is the owner of the process himself. When God puts it in your heart or amongst people that this is what you are supposed to do. As much as before men before your own eyes it might seem to be a mountain but God has spoken the only thing you need to do is make sure that it is God that has spoken and that you are doing it the way God wants it other things leave it to him let us stop the grasshopper mentality we are just grasshoppers before it That thing is a mountain before it it before us that it will not move. And in the course of this also the enemy gets an opportunity. We are now talking about today just like that time. The enemy gets an opportunity when he sees that unajurumia at eh unajua kitambo nilikuwa na ubiri nilikuwa na ubiri moto unashuka kitambo eh nilikuwa ninaenda house to house eh kitambo ningefunga ningefunga na pray and fast siku 21 nikikunywa tu maji peke yake eh nikikumbuka hizo siku eh when i remember those days i don't know ah hata siku hizi siombi hata kuna haja niendelee na uokovu No. Don't weep over the past glory. The God of the past glory is the God of the present glory. He is the God of the next glory. And he says he will take us from one level to another. Wake up somebody and work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So do not allow the enemy to take advantage. Just the way the enemies wanted to take advantage during the times of Nehemiah when the wall was being reconstructed and these people the enemy used the voices of the army of Samaria he said what are those feeble Jews doing will they restore their wall will they offer sacrifices will they finish in a day can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are Tobiah the Ammonite who was at his side said what they are building even a fox climbing upon uh, up on it would break down the wall of stones he asked and now let's let's see the response in the midst of such hopelessness in the midst of such discouragement in the midst of of seeing mountains before your eyes what happens how did nehemiah respond This is how Nehemiah responded in verse number 4. He now he did not go and answer them at that time. He knew who had called. He went to confirm and petition and he said in verse 4, "Hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them I I, I think this is where back to sender came from i don't know i, I think so yeah. you see what uh, what, what he said that hear us our god for we are despised turn their insults back on their own heads give them over as plunder in a land of captivity 
Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight. For they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its way height. For the people worked with all their hearts. That's how Nehemiah responded. And this is how God expected the people during uh, the times of Haggai to respond to the fears and the worries and also maybe the voices from the old men uh, who had said that uh, this is nothing. It cannot be compared. Yes, they were right. It couldn't be compared. But yet God had just started. So what is the answer? The answer is God has just started. It is just the beginning. I love this verse in Genesis where the Bible says that in the beginning the world was formless. It was formless. It was void. It was just a vacuum. But God did it. He brought it into form. He brought light. And he did it step by step. It was a personal project to God. You are a personal project. The work that God has, I'm using this, the work that God has commissioned to you, it is of his interest. It is of his concern. You are just an ambassador. He is in charge. Even as others will speak negative to bring that work down, answer Sometimes even you will not answer them. But you will go back to God and tell God, look at these insults. And God takes charge. What is that that you have been trying to do? You know clearly that God has put it in your heart that you may do. And I can repeat, maybe I'm speaking to a pastor somewhere who started off planting a church or started off a fellowship somewhere. And you clearly heard God telling you. But because of the negative voices, because of the Tobias and the Salvalats, you feel like you are being discouraged. You feel like you are hopeless. And maybe someone even uh, got an early retirement so that he may concentrate on the course, on the calling. And you heard God clearly. I can tell you for sure. If you clearly heard God, God has that in his heart and is in charge. The God of the wisdom of Solomon, the God of the man magnificence of Solomon, the, of Solomon's temple, he's still the God even after the rubbles. He's still the God even at the sight of the ruins. He's still the God even in the midst of of, of lack of harvest. He is the same, same God. So, what you are doing, let it be ordered of the Lord. If it is ordered of the Lord, you are on the process and you are God's personal project. Let's go as, as, uh, as we, we head to the final stretch. Verse number four. But now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. Be strong and work. If I may join it with verse number five. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. He tells them to be strong and he mentions them. He mentions the leaders. He mentions the priesthood. He mentions the remnants and all the people. And he tells them to be strong. This is not the first time that God is telling his people to be strong. Remember when Joshua was just beginning the journey to lead Israel. When God comes to him in chapter number one 
of Joshua and as he, he has informed him of the death of Moses, he tells him, be of good courage, be strong, do not fear, for I will be with you. This is the same, same God. The God of Joshua, son of Nun, is the same God of Joshua, son of Jehozadak. The God of King Solomon, son of David, is the same, same uh, God of Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel. Hallelujah. And he is the same God of Nixon, the son of Elijah. He is the same God of Lynette, the daughter of Sunday. He is the same God of Wafula, the son of uh, whoever it is. This is what we are saying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? So God told them, do not fear. He reassured them that he was in charge. He had, he had taken over. That now that they had accepted to move with him, he told them, be strong and work. That don't sit. Don't just sit and say, like the days of manna, the temple will fall from heaven. No. Even the, the days of Hana, uh, uh, manna, or still God told them to work. God gave instructions for the tabernacle to be made. So it needs work. Rise up and work. It is working with your own hands. The magnificence of King Solomon's temple did not just come. It did not fall from heaven. It was constructed. People worked. The magnificence of the ministry that you are looking at, or the work, or the business that you are looking at, and seeing, and admiring, it did not just fall from heaven. It did not. Somebody rose up and worked. Mutu alijinyima usingizi. Mutu bada ya kuomba na kufunga, alireporti kazini. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yes. Kuomba na kufunga, ukisha omba na kufunga, rise up and work. Because God wants us to work. Tukisha enda, tumeomba na kufunga, tunaitaji kufanya kazi. Tukisha tubu dhambi, na tumegeuka, tunaitaji kufanya kazi. That's how the magnificence will come. That's how God will beautify his temple. So we will not just sit and wait. And so, God was telling them not, not to just feel dissatisfied because of comparing the temple with the, with the former temple. But he was telling them that they have to arise and work and not to fear with a courage like that of Joshua, with a courage like that of Nehemiah, you remember if you read that book of Nehemiah that people were building. In one hand is the tool or the material to work and in another hand is a weapon to fight. Hakuna kupumzika, hakuna kulala, hakuna wakati wa adui kuja kupanda magugu. Usimpe adui nafasi ya kuja kupanda magugu. Magugu ya kukudiscourage na kuambia kwamba wewe hakuna mahali kwingine unaweza wewe kuisha. Rise up and work. Magnificent things are not just received. They are worked for. They need people to be strong. They need people not to fear. They need courageous people. God works with the courageous people. Yes, he uses the weak to ashamed the strong. But then he, is, uh, he manifests his strength through the weak. He needs people to rise up. He needs people to have the faith like of the lepers. He needs people to have the faith like of David. That when people have ran into the caves, the whole army has run into the caves. He wants a David to rise. And rise and do things with diligence and even want to do exceeding. God had not programmed David to build a temple, but David did great things uh, for the purpose of the kingdom to an extent that he wanted himself to build the temple. But God said, no, your son will do that. Fanya mambo paka mungu wakwambia, hey, metosha sasa, 
eh, sio kwamba unafanya mabaya lakini eh, season yako nimekupatia we nimekupangia ufanye hii umaifanya nini umaifanya nini hadi ika, unaona kwamba hii hata Mungu anasema eh yenyewe nimefanya Just the way during the times of Moses when people were giving to that was the construction of the tabernacle they gave until Moses told them yeah it's enough it's enough so whatever you are giving yourself to for the purpose of the work of the Lord do it to an extent that God can get to a point and say hey my son my daughter you have done it sasa yako yenye nilikuwa nimesema ufanye imeisha hey Wow, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But that you cannot do that if you don't change mentality. You have to understand that uh, remember here God tells reassures them. He tells them, "I am with you according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt." And I've, as I've just said that you know God is the God, he's the one who had instructed them in chapter number one, that you go and do that work. Now he had instructed them there was no cause to worry so he was reminding them that I am the one who has initiated that work I am the one who has commissioned I am the one who knows that the former temple was glorious but then I have told you you have just begun wake up and work rise up and work I am the one who covenanted with you with your forefathers when they were coming uh, out of Egypt so I cannot leave you halfway this is what God was assuring me God is assuring you today that he will not leave you halfway. He has to accomplish that which he started. Just remain inclined to his voice. Just remain listening to his voice. As I've said that it uh, he said uh, that I am with you. So he has assured us that he is with us. He's assuring you. He assured the people of Judah that he was with uh, with them. So there was no excuse of any kind. So when we embark on God's work, we are not alone. He's with us just as he assured Haggai. His spirit with, is with us. He has said in verse number 5 that his spirit is, is with us. He has an interest to take care of. Akona haja ambayo anataka kushughulikia. Akona mradi ambao anataka kufanya. Akona mpango na huu mpango anataka kumaliza. He will he will nurture and protect his interest. He will defend his interest. That's why he's reminding us and he reminded them that uh, uh, he covenanted with them. And so he was telling them that there was no need to continue weeping and crying and being hopeless and disillusioned and and being discouraged because of the past glory because the same same god of the past magnificence and glory was the same god that was speaking to them and telling them yes let's go god couldn't have allowed mediocrity to be seen on his house mungu hakutishika and he is the same god even today the same god who enabled king solomon to build that glorious uh, temple with great splendor was the same god who was enabling zerubbabel let us know and that god had not run out of ideas and even today god has not run out of ideas neither has he run out of resources we therefore have no excuse not to do his work Hatuna kisababu cha kusema hatutafanya kazi yake. Hatutaendelea na huduma. Hatutaendelea na uokovu. Hatutaendelea na kujenga hekalu lake. Hatutaendelea na kuendeleza ufalme wake. Hatutaendelea na kuhubiri. Hatuna sababu yoyote. Maana ametuita yeye ndio mwenye rasilimali, yeye ndio mwenye fedha na dhahabu. Ametuita na ametuhakikishia yuko nasi. The only thing you can be asking God, God are you still with me? He reassures you, yes, I am with you. Then you continue. Nothing else as long as he's with you. And as I've said, he does not run out of ideas. That's why he said in in Isaiah chapter number 43, verse number 18 and 19, this is where we are finishing. Isaiah chapter number 43, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, "Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and and streams 
in the wasteland. Hallelujah. That God is doing a new thing. Yes, he had made that temple glorious. But he's doing a new thing. Newer than that. Even in your personal life. That which had stalled. And you have dedicated it to God. Just rise up and walk. He's doing a new thing. Something new is springing forth. He has not run out of ideas. He's the God of all wisdom. He's the God of all power. He's the owner of resources. A thousand cattle on the hills belong to him. Silver and gold belong to him. Do not fear. Be strong. Be encouraged. And rise up and walk. Hallelujah. This is the message that was given to Haggai to tell the people of Judah. This is the message that we are hearing today. That rise up and walk. Not just work on your own things, but the grace is there for you to work for the benefit of the kingdom, for the advancement of the kingdom. Do not give yourself so many excuses. Do not be discouraged. Do not feel hopeless. Do not give up. Rise up and work. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for listening. This is where we come to the end uh, of this session today. We will continue with verse number six in the coming session next Thursday. And you are there, you have been listening to this word, and you have not received Jesus Christ. You have been listening to this Bible study. There's no way you can begin rebuilding your life without Christ Jesus. Jesus is the builder himself, the cornerstone. You cannot build without a cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone himself. So it's high time you receive the cornerstone so that you can begin rebuilding your life. Even before you rebuild that temple, before you rebuild that work, you have to rebuild yourself. And for you to rebuild yourself, you cannot do it on your own. You need Jesus, the cornerstone, so that you can add yourself there as the living stone. Hallelujah. So receive Jesus today. If you have not received Jesus Christ and you would like to receive him to get born again, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. Remove my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. Turn every rubble into glory and every ashes into beauty. I receive you today. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I may serve you in holiness. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. Amen. Let's finish with our prayer. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you because of your teachings today. We give you praise and honor. We realize that, my Father, many times we will look at our past, our past glory, and feel that we cannot go on, and feel that whatever we are doing, it's nothing. Or we will see, we will look at the glory of others and want to bask in their glory, forgetting, forgetting that you have shaped them for different things. Father, we repent. In the name of Jesus, we accept to rebuild your temple, the spiritual temple you reside in us. Father, also the physical temple, your kingdom, and where we gather in the name of Jesus. Your work that you put in our lives, we surrender to you, Lord. May you have your way in our lives. May you lead us, Jehovah God. May you sanctify us with the blood of Jesus. Lead us, Jehovah God. Minister to us. Thank you because of the souls that have received you. I pray that you may keep them safe, my Father, Lord. Fill them with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. There are them that have been watching and listening. And they are unwell, Lord. We declare healing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare your touch, my God. There are others that are their hearts, my Father, have been hardened by different situations, my God. Or by remembering the things that they did in the past. Lord, I pray that you may sanctify them, wash them. Forgive them, Lord, and soften their hearts. Remove the heart of stone and put the heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the great work that you are doing. Protect them that have received you in the name of Jesus Christ. Increase in us, my Father. Take us from one level to another, even as far as this Bible study is concerned. And even this altar, my God, let it continue burning with fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. And from this place, let salvation flow. Let deliverance flow. Let healing flow. Let your presence, your grace, your power flow, my Father. 
Father, Lord. And let your people tap into your kingdom resources for the glory and honor of your name. We bless you, Lord. Bless your people. Even as we go, Jehovah God, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Whoever has heard this voice, my God, protect them, my Father, from the voices of the enemies, the enemies and the discouraging voices, like the wife of Job, like the the, 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 the Sanballats and Tobias of this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, and we give you glory. Thank you for the peace that surpasses every human understanding. There are those that have lost their loved ones, my God. We pray for your peace and comfort. There are those that are unwell in the hospital. We declare healing in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, because you are not limited by distance, nor are you limited by any resource. You are the same God of the great magnificence, and you are the God even after the rebels and the ruins. In the name of Jesus, we lift you, Lord, and we lift your holy name and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Please continue joining us even on um, Tuesday next week. We are gathering for prayer here on Tuesdays from 6. And on Wednesdays we do have here a glorious worship service. Please do join us on online. And also you can visit us at Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry here in Santon of uh, Kasarani Mwiki Road, 4th Street. And on Sundays, we have got powerful services here. The first service begins at 9.30. For you who, will, who goes to work maybe as from uh, 12 there, you can join us in the first service that begins at 9.30. And also, another service begins at 11.30. Please join us and we'll be blessed. You who has received Jesus Christ, please get in touch with us, inbox us, visit us, and we'll be glad to walk with you in the work of salvation. On Sundays, the servant of God ministering uh, is the servant of God, Bishop Dr. Fidelis Oboge. Please do not fail to join us, and God bless you. We do love you. From Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry, we wish you well, and shalom. Amen. Nina posoma, nenola ko, baba nina 